Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into Why Love Matters by Sue Gerhardt, an insightful exploration of how the earliest phase of our lives fundamentally shapes our future selves. Going beyond the traditional nature versus nurture discussion, the book presents a compelling argument backed by scientific evidence that our development is co produced by genetics and social experiences during infancy. This eye opening narrative links many adult social and psychological issues directly to experiences in our first years, suggesting impactful ways for intervention and care. About the author, Sue Gerhardt is not only a seasoned psychotherapist from Oxford, England, with specialized knowledge in areas such as sexual abuse and youth delinquency, but also a pioneering figure in early child development. Her affiliation with the Tavistock Clinic and her foundation of the Oxford Parent Infant Project highlight her commitment to understanding and improving the mental health landscape from its very roots. Gerhardt's prior work, The Selfish Society, complements her credentials as a leading voice in psychology. Why Love Matters is an essential read, not just for mental health professionals seeking to deepen their understanding of developmental psychology, but also for current and expectant parents. Through Gerhardt's expert insights, readers are guided on the paramount importance of nurturing in a child's early years, offering valuable knowledge for anyone invested in fostering healthier, happier future generations. Why Love Matters, How Affection Shapes a Baby's Brain. Introduction, Unlocking the Secret Science Behind Love's Lasting Impact. Have you ever pondered what truly outlines our identity? Is it the genetic code entwined within us or the world that unfolds around us from the moment we take our first breath? Sue Gerhardt, through years dedicated to unweaving the complex tapestries of psychoanalysis, neuroscience, and biochemistry, presents a compelling revelation that challenges the binary of nature versus nurture. Her findings illuminate that the essence of who we become is etched into our being within the tender, formative years of early childhood. Imagine the mind of a baby as an artist's canvas, remarkably malleable and receptive. The strokes of love, care, anxiety, and neglect wield the power to sketch lasting neurological patterns, crafting the very core of our identity. Through this lens, the debate of nature against nurture evolves into a harmonious duet, where social experiences dance with biological predispositions to shape our existence. Dive into the science that guided Gerhardt to this groundbreaking insight and uncover the profound implications it bears for parents, educators, and policymakers. We will journey through the discovery of our triune brain structure uncover lessons from a Romanian orphanage about cognitive development, and investigate how stress can derail the growth of young minds. As we traverse these insights, you will gain an understanding of the profound influence of early life experiences on shaping our neurological landscape, the critical interaction between our social environments and genetic makeup in defining who we are, the lasting impact of love and care versus anxiety and neglect on a child's development. Join us as we explore the science of love and its undeniable role in crafting the tapestry of human identity. Part 1. Exploring the Evolutionary Journey of the Human Brain The wise words of English poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge offer an intriguing perspective on the distinctiveness of human nature. Unlike a tiger, whose essence remains unchanged regardless of its solitude or company, humans are profoundly transformed by their interactions with others. This ability to be truly altered by relationships is what separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom, embodying our capacity for empathy and interpreting the complex tapestry of social cues. This transformative power is rooted in what we now understand as the social brain, The essence of this insight is that the brain evolved in stages, with the social brain emerging as the crowning jewel of this evolutionary masterpiece. Traditionally, we think of the brain as a singular entity, 
Yet neuroscientists introduce us to a more nuanced conception, you are. The triune brain, or a three-in-one brain system. Each segment of this composite brain mirrors a distinct epoch of our ancestral journey. The saga begins with the development of a reptilian brain, centered around the brainstem. This primal structure ensured the performance of fundamental life operations such as respiration, acting as the bedrock of our cognitive architecture. Next, the narrative progresses with the emergence of the mammalian brain, enveloping the reptilian core. This new addition brought forth the dawn of basic emotions, thereby enriching our relational dynamics, including the tender bond of nurturing between parent and offspring. The crescendo of this evolutionary tale is the formation of the cerebral cortex, the fertile ground from which the social brain sprouted. The social brain is our passport to humanity, facilitating complex emotive control, social signaling, and the rich experience of empathy. Beyond the realm of primal emotions such as fear and joy, the social brain empowers us to navigate the nuanced spectrum of human feelings, including sadness, shame, and love. It transforms our perception from a monochrome to a vivid technicolor panorama of emotions and social interactions. Interestingly, the journey of the social brain begins at birth, while a newborn arrives equipped with basic survival systems, breathing, movement detection, and an innate response to environmental stimuli. The social brain awaits activation. Its development is a postnatal journey, intricately woven by the threads of human connection and interaction. This revelation sets the stage for understanding the profound impact of nurture on the evolution of our social selves. Part 2. The delicate dance of developing a baby's brain through social interaction. It's a common scene in households with newborns, a parent's exasperation as their baby rejects spoon-fed vegetables or wails into the night. While it might be tempting to respond with a stern voice or an attempt at negotiation, such strategies tend to falter. The reason? Babies lack the neurological toolkit to manage their responses or understand their caregiver's plight. This gap in capabilities underscores a profound truth about human development. The emergence of the social brain is intricately tied to the nature of early social experiences. Central to our discussion is the idea that the formation of a baby's brain is significantly influenced by the quality of social interaction they encounter. Before a baby can master self-regulation or empathize with their mother's frustration over uneaten carrot puree, a pivotal component of their social brain needs to develop, the orbitofrontal cortex. This region, as neuroscientist Daniel Goleman has highlighted, is the cradle of emotional intelligence, pivotal for navigating the social world. Damage or underdevelopment in this area can lead to profound difficulties in interpreting social and emotional cues, manifesting in extreme cases as sociopathic behaviors. The development of the orbitofrontal cortex, however, is not pre-programmed. It is sculpted by the tapestry of a child's experiences in the critical early years. A phenomenon researchers term experience dependency. This dynamic nature of brain development serves an evolutionary purpose, allowing humans to seamlessly integrate into a wide array of cultural contexts by absorbing the specific norms and rules of their surroundings. Yet, this plasticity also carries a vulnerability, the potential for harm in response to adverse experiences. This delicate balance between development and potential damage is starkly illustrated by the research of primate scientist Harry Harlow in the 1930s. Harlow's experiments with monkeys demonstrated that isolation during critical early periods can lead to behaviors akin to autism, underscoring the integral role of social contact in healthy development. A more recent investigation into the fate of children raised in Romanian orphanages further corroborates these findings. The neglected children, deprived of meaningful adult interaction, exhibited significant voids in their brain scans, where the orbitofrontal cortex should have been bustling with activity. This disturbing revelation serves as a stark reminder of the lasting impact that the quality of early social interactions can have on the foundational development of the brain. 
Through understanding these insights, we gain a deeper appreciation for the critical role of nurturing responsive care in the healthy development of a baby's brain, particularly in cultivating the capacities that underlie social and emotional intelligence. Part 3. The Joy of Early Bonds How Touch and Eye Contact Nurture Baby's Brain Before embarking on the grand adventure of understanding human culture, a baby steps into the world through a series of intimate invites, moments of touch and shared looks that forge the initial connections between them and their caregivers. This seamless blend of affectionate interactions and the biochemical responses they evoke turns the art of social interaction into a source of pleasure for both baby and caregiver. For parents reveling in the joys of their relationship with their newborn, there's ample reason for optimism. It's in the fabric of these joy-filled exchanges that the seeds of cognitive development and emotional regulation are sown. Courtesy of the orbitofrontal cortex is responsive, dance to pleasure. Central to this delightful narrative is the idea that babies are captivated by the act of touching and making eye contact with their caregivers, finding deep joy in these fundamental interactions. Touch, the first language of comfort and connection that a baby learns, carries transformative power. Imagine a baby cradled warmly in his father's arms, a sanctuary of safety and love. This simple act of holding not only soothes the baby, but also synchronizes his cardiac and nervous systems with those of his father. This visceral experience underpins the human affinity for touch, illuminating why we instinctively embrace to offer comfort or seek physical intimacy to express our deepest connections. Equally mesmerizing for a baby is the world of visual engagement. Through the simple act of gazing into his mother's eyes, a baby enters a silent dialogue, interpreting dilated pupils as indicators of joy. This mutual enchantment triggers a cascade of biochemical reactions, setting the stage for a baby's physiological response of pleasure and excitement. Beta endorphins, nature's own molecules of happiness, flood the orbitofrontal cortex, not only igniting feelings of pleasure but also encouraging the growth of neurons by regulating glucose and insulin levels. This biochemical symphony is further enriched by the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter that enhances tissue growth in the prefrontal cortex. While the molecular intricacies of these processes are complex, their purpose is beautifully simple, to make the act of locking eyes with a parent a source of immense joy. This repetitive cycle of pleasurable interactions serves as the cornerstone for the burgeoning social brain, illustrating how the most tender moments of connection lay the groundwork for a baby's intricate journey into the social world. Part 4. The Social Blueprint of the Brain's Neural Network Imagine you're standing before a half-constructed building with the architect's blueprints clutched in your hands. These plans outline potential, the foundations, the walls, the skeleton of a future home. But it's the construction process itself that brings this potential to life, brick by brick. This interplay between design and development mirrors the fascinating way in which our brains grow and evolve, shaped intimately by social experiences. At birth, a baby possesses all the neurons she will ever have, a genetic inheritance that sets the stage for her brain's potential. Yet, as she navigates through her first year, a transformative period awaits. Her brain's size will double, necessitating the intricate task of connecting this neural constellation. This is where the journey outside the womb becomes pivotal, as genetic predispositions and environmental stimuli dance together to sculpt the architecture of her mind. The essence of this development lies in the understanding that the brain's neural network is intricately tied to social patterns. Between 6 and 12 months of age, cognitive construction hits its stride, paving the way for a rich tapestry of potential connections. This burgeoning network lays the groundwork for the mind's unfolding, but the process is far from complete. What follows is a period of pruning, akin to a gardener thoughtfully shaping a bush where the brain begins to shed rarely used connections, 
honing in on those pathways that prove vital. But how does the brain discern which connections hold value? Daniel Siegel, an American neuroscientist, describes the brain as a forecasting entity designed to predict and navigate the complexities of our world through the anticipation of outcomes. The infant's brain, absorbing the tapestry of social interactions, gradually discerns patterns, recurring experiences that provide a roadmap for understanding her environment. Consider the mother who consistently displays a gesture of disgust while changing diapers. Such repeated interactions craft an expectation, etching the notion that diaper changing is an unpleasant task firmly into the baby's neural circuitry. Conversely, experiences lacking in regularity, such as the same gesture of disgust but occurring without any discernible pattern, fail to offer predictive value and are thus pruned away, deemed unnecessary in the brain's quest for efficiency. This elegant dance of construction and pruning reveals the profound influence of social interactions on the development of the brain's neural network. It underscores the vital role that our early environments play in molding the anticipatory mechanisms that guide us through life, crafting a brain that reflects the nuanced patterns and rhythms of our social world. Part 5. Decoding the Stress Response. Its Impact on Adults and Babies Alike. Stress, an all-too-familiar companion in the hustle and bustle of adult life, often emerges from the myriad pressures of daily responsibilities, from the grind of long work days to the anxiety of financial burdens. It's a concept many of us resign to as an inevitable facet of growing up, accepting it as the price paid for independence and caregiving. However, stress is far more than just an adult's burden. It is a universal experience, woven into the fabric of human existence from infancy. At the heart of this discussion is the notion that while the human stress response serves crucial functions, it also harbors the potential to compromise the health of both adults and babies. This response to stress is a legacy of our ancestors, who navigated a world brimming with life or death situations. Imagine facing a predatory threat. The body's immediate release of cortisol serves as an internal alarm bell, marshalling resources to confront the imminent danger. Although the threats of the modern world are less about physical survival and more about social standing and security, the same ancient mechanisms are triggered, catapulting our bodies into action. Cortisol has its merits, particularly in short-lived scenarios where a burst of energy could mean the difference between safety and peril, or pushing through to meet a crucial deadline. However, the benefit of this stress hormone quickly diminishes when its levels fail to normalize after a crisis, leading to prolonged exposure. Such chronic stress can wreak havoc on the immune system, lowering our defenses against illness and contributing to a host of health issues. While adults possess a myriad of strategies to contend with stress, from social engagements to therapeutic interventions and even career changes, babies find themselves at a distinct disadvantage. Without the capacity to engage in self-care or articulate their needs, they rely entirely on their caregivers to regulate their exposure to stress. This responsibility is monumental, as unchecked cortisol levels in infants can set the stage for adverse health outcomes that might echo far into their futures. Understanding the dual nature of the stress response, its evolutionary utility and its potential for harm, underscores the importance of managing stress, not just for our well-being, but also for the health and development of the youngest members of our society. Recognizing the far-reaching impact of stress compels us to approach its management with a sense of urgency and compassion, ensuring that both adults and babies can thrive despite the challenges it presents. Part 6. The Essential Role of Caregivers in Easing Early Life Stress Step into an environment fraught with uncertainty and lack of control, reminiscent of encountering a daunting predator in the wild or facing an unexpected financial crisis. Such scenarios epitomize stress, a stark unpredictability paired with a profound sense of helplessness. Now imagine navigating the world with the inherent unpredictability and vulnerability of infancy, where the mere absence of a caregiver signifies a potential crisis. 
This encapsulates why the earliest chapters of life can be among the most stress-laden. At the core of our discussion is the critical reliance of babies on their caregivers for survival, marking any form of separation as deeply traumatic. For a baby, caregivers are more than providers of love and comfort. They are the lifelines ensuring the fulfillment of basic needs. Infants are entirely dependent, incapable of self-sustenance or self-protection with their cries serving as their only means of communication. Unanswered, these cries reflect a dire powerlessness, sparking significant distress sparked by the absence of their primary safety net. This distress is biochemically represented by corticotropin release factor, CRF, often referred to as the fear hormone. It underscores the sheer terror infants face when briefly separated from their guardians, who embody their very means of survival. Similarly, cortisol, a hormone associated with stress, tells a compelling tale of the impact of caregiver separation on infants. Research, including a notable 2002 study in biological psychiatry, illuminates this relationship by showing how separation elevates cortisol levels in young mammals. The study's findings on squirrel monkeys demonstrate that recurrent short-term separations heighten the monkey's cortisol response, cultivating behaviors marked by clinginess, distress, and a decrease in playfulness. Parallel studies on humans draw a line connecting early cortisol exposure to long-term stress management challenges. Specifically, early life cortisol exposure led to a diminished number of cortisol receptors in later stages, complicating the ability to regulate stress. This diminished capacity underscores the far-reaching implications of early caregiver presence or absence on an infant's physiological resilience to stress. However, there's a silver lining. The same body of research highlighted that infants who experienced frequent touch and care from their caregivers boasted a significantly richer array of cortisol receptors, bolstering their stress regulation capabilities later in life. This compelling evidence underscores the profound influence of early caregiver interaction on the developmental trajectory of stress management mechanisms. In the delicate balance of infant development, the presence and affection of caregivers are not merely comforting. They are crucial. They provide a buffer against the onslaught of early life stress, equipping babies with the biochemical foundation necessary to navigate future challenges with greater resilience. Part 7. The Ripple Effect of Parental Stress on Children The profound impact of a caregiver's emotional state on their child extends beyond the mere presence or absence. Indeed, instances where a child is physically near their parents but receives inadequate care or encounters emotionally distant guardians spotlight a significant issue. Studies indicate children of parents grappling with challenges like alcohol addiction exhibit heightened cortisol levels, signaling not just inherited stress, but an environment steeped in tension. This narrative underscores a crucial insight. Stressed parents invariably lead to stressed children. A telling study published in 1994 in the journal Biological Psychiatry explored this dynamic through the lens of unpredictable foraging amongst monkeys. The scenario placed the mother in a position where securing food was a constant uncertainty, a situation more stressful than consistent scarcity. This uncertainty didn't just spike stress levels in the mother, it cascaded down to her offspring, saturating their developing brains with stress hormones. The crux of these findings lay in the mother's preoccupation with survival, which rendered her emotionally unavailable to offer the reassurance her young desperately needed, trapping them in a perpetual state of anxiety. The question then arises, does this mirror human experiences? A seminal study by psychologist Marilyn Essex from the University of Wisconsin lends weight to this possibility, tracking 570 families over five critical years, from their children's birth to their fifth birthday, Essex delved into the interplay between parental and child stress. Her research revealed a striking correlation. Children dealing with stressed mothers at the age of four and a half had elevated cortisol levels but only if their mothers had been similarly stressed during the children's infancy. This points to a heightened sensitivity to stress in children who navigated a tumultuous infancy, 
suggesting they generate more cortisol when faced with stressful situations compared to peers who had a more serene start to life. The implications of Essex's findings sketch a nuanced portrait of how early experiences with stressed caregivers seed a more profound vulnerability to stress in children, shaping their responses to future challenges. This cycle underscores the inextricable link between a parent's emotional well-being and their child's capacity to manage stress, highlighting the enduring influence of early environmental factors on a child's physiological and psychological development. Understanding this intergenerational transmission of stress emphasizes the importance of addressing parental stress not just for the sake of the adults, but as a crucial aspect of fostering resilience, emotionally healthy children capable of navigating life's inevitable ups and downs with greater ease. Part 8. The Long Shadow of Early Social Neglect on Mental Health In an ideal world, the infancy period is a sanctuary of security and affection, where a baby's brain is nurtured with the utmost care. This supportive environment encourages the growth of additional cortisol receptors, equipping the child with a robust defense against stress in later life. However, when this early stage is marred by social deprivation, it can set the stage for an intensified stress response that not only elevates immediate cortisol levels, but may also pave the path towards anxiety and depression in adulthood. This brings us to a critical insight. Early life social deprivation is profoundly linked to an increased risk of depression later in life. A brain enriched with a network of cortisol receptors is adept at neutralizing stress hormones, effectively regulating cortisol production to prevent the harms of prolonged exposure. Contrastingly, a brain that has missed out on the calming reassurance of a peaceful infancy tends to respond disproportionately to stress. In such cases, cortisol floods the neural pathways, overwhelming the limited number of receptors available. This relentless surge of cortisol not only sustains a state of chronic stress, but also has the potential to contribute to depression over time. The ripple effects of inadequate social interaction during infancy extend beyond cortisol dynamics, also impacting the brain's production of norepinephrine, a crucial biochemical for concentration and effort. This correlation draws a direct line between the paucity of early nurturing and the hallmark concentration challenges seen in depression. Adults grappling with depression often struggle to break free from self-destructive patterns, partly due to diminished norepinephrine levels. Moreover, social neglect in infancy can lead to a lasting deficit in dopamine synapses, as highlighted by British biologist Paul Martin in his exploration, The Sickening Mind. Dopamine plays a pivotal role in shaping our engagement with the world. Its abundance fosters a positive outlook and adaptability, while its scarcity can diminish the capacity for joy, exacerbate the difficulty in facing challenges, and increase susceptibility to depression. This constellation of findings underscores a critical truth. Love, particularly in the tender stages of life, is a fundamental ingredient for psychological well-being. The sense of being cherished and safeguarded in infancy lays a foundation, not just for immediate health, but also for enduring happiness and resilience. The stark contrast between the trajectories of those bathed in early affection and those who endure early neglect illuminates the profound influence of our earliest social experiences on the journey towards emotional and mental health. Final summary. At the heart of human nature is our innate drive for social connection. Empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, is one of many refined social skills that define us. Yet these capabilities are not present from the moment of birth. Instead, the social brain, the neural network responsible for these complex interactions, begins its development postnatally, sculpted and refined by our early experiences with the world around us. This journey of shaping the social brain underscores a profound truth about human development. The nature and quality of our initial social interactions play a pivotal role in determining the trajectory of our growth. When a newborn is met with an abundance of love and care, she is likely to flourish, cultivating a well-rounded social brain equipped to navigate the intricacies of human relationships. 
these early positive interactions lay the groundwork for a lifetime of emotional health and resilience. Conversely, an infancy marred by high levels of stress and inadequate social nurturing can predispose an individual to significant challenges. Such beginnings are linked not just to developmental hurdles, but also to a higher likelihood of experiencing depression and facing difficulties in coping with life's demands down the line. In essence, our earliest encounters with care, affection, and social engagement are more than mere moments in time. They are the building blocks of our social brain. They influence not only our capacity for empathy and connection, but also our overall well-being and ability to thrive in the social tapestry of human existence. Understanding this critical link between early social experiences and developmental outcomes highlights the importance of nurturing and love in crafting the foundations of a healthy, socially adept individual. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.